took me near five minutes, if not longer, just to get out of the driveway, but I did it. Now I'm on the highway, averaging about 35 kilometers an hour, seen about 10 vehicles in the ditch already, and I haven't driven more than, not even, I don't even think I've driven 10 kilometers yet. But this is it. Fuck yeah, Canada. So, you got to see the snap that I was taking earlier while I was driving 30 kilometers an hour on the highway. And then that got me thinking about like, right now, as I'm driving on the highway, roads are cleared, it's still snowing, uh, but the roads are clear on the highway right now, which is fantastic. Um, so instead of going 30, I can go like 50 or 60, yay. Anyway, uh, that, that thing about Captain Dan, um, I've just always loved that scene. Like, I, I just, I don't know. It was just that whole thing of him laughing in the face of God, right? And him having like, is it, okay, first of all, I'm not like some crazy like, I love Forrest Gump, it's the best. Uh, it's, it's good. But, like, there's so much about it that I dislike because I'm like, man, I hate Jenny in that thing so much. I hate that Forrest loves her still. Anyway, that's that's not what we're talking about. Uh, but just the fact that I'm not, like, super, super crazy into the movie, but I've seen it, you know. And, um, yeah, Captain Dan, I don't know, there's just always my favorite thing of them, like, just, like, in the storm. Just, like, him having this moment of reclamation after, you know, being so depressed and wanting to end his life. And then just finding this new strength and renewal and, oh, it's fantastic. I love it. Anyway, uh, but what I also love is is Canada. <laughs> um, and I don't, like, there's this weird sense of pride that I have in being able to handle a Canadian winter where some people can't. And it's interesting because, like, some of it is probably my body type. Like, the amount of fat that I can carry is also warm. Um, but I mean, ever since I was a kid, I don't remember ever being like really cold or whatever. I didn't get bigger until like high school. And even then I was not that big in high school. Uh, just a little chubbier than, than most, but just anyway, nothing like what I am now. Uh, but yeah, as a kid, like, I don't know. I never, like I was in Lethbridge, which is not that cold in compared to like to Saskatchewan, especially the outlook where we were uh, in Southern Saskatchewan. But like, I don't know. It just, it's never, it's never really bothered me. I've always enjoyed the winter. Um, now that I'm mountain biking, I don't enjoy the winter as much because I want to be out on my bike. But, uh, oh man, this is like a graveyard out here. Three, just right there in that one little boop, there's three different vehicles in the ditch. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so, um, yeah, but there's this weird sense of pride of being like, yeah, I'm Canadian, I can handle this. And it's not against people who aren't Canadian, it's like a weird sense of pride with other Canadians because like, some people can't handle the cold and I, like I said a weird sense of pride because it's a thing about being Canadian is like yeah it's winter here we get real winters and whatever else I mean obviously it depends where in you where in Canada you live whether it's Northwest Territories it's way crazier than you know the prairies but the prairies get some real winters um, especially Saskatchewan uh, or the area of Saskatchewan that I was in like it's it's not it's not mild by any means but anyway uh, <laughs> I was just, it's, it's this thing like everyone's body is different. Why do I have a sense of pride? Because my body can handle the cold better. Cause it's not about like, yeah, I'm Canadian and I'm prepared. Like I am prepared. My trunk is full of stuff and extra boots and blankets and you know, sleeping bags and anything. If I got stranded, I, I've got another winter jacket in there. I've got steer hot gloves in here, like whatever. I am prepared, but it's not about that. It's not a pride in being prepared. It's just like, this thing that I'm, I'm getting better at not doing, I'm like, some people's bodies are not meant for this climate, despite the fact that they grew up here. Or maybe they, you know, their parents even grew up here. And like, you know, my parents weren't even here more than a couple months before I was born. And so I don't know what it is about me specifically, because they don't handle the cold as well. My mom doesn't, I'm sure my dad doesn't, I have no idea, but pretty confident um, that he can't handle the cold as well as me. But it, yeah, I don't know, it's just a weird sense of pride of like, like really like this bothers you like this is this is Canada like get used to it like I don't know and I have it this is like this is <laughs> this weird like racist type thing with me that works the other way because I think this thing like just the way that I said that has a certain attitude of like yeah this is Canada get used to it bud like it's it's not coming from like 
a stereotypical racist place when people are like, yeah, this is Canada, learn the language, or get GTFO, like, get out. Like, you know what I mean? It's not that. But it's this thing that I, I reverse sometimes. I think about it in my head. I'm like, I'm, yeah, like, this, you know, born and raised white Canadian person can't handle the winter. And then, like, people are always surprised at me being able to handle it because they, they think that just because I'm brown or, or if they know that I'm Hispanic that it must be, like, a hot climate. And depend. I mean, the country that my parents are from, which is Chile, is, like, it runs almost, like, the whole length of the continent. So the north is you know really hot like we're from like the central area of that country and the south is like crazy cold it's like colder than here which is anyway i'm ranting now but yeah that weird sense of pride that i need to shake off but i'm, I'm happy anyway like I, I love the winter i love being able to handle the winter i is that thing like calvin's dad like in calvin or Hobbes comics like being cold builds character like that kind of thing i don't know it's just been this thing and it wasn't i, I will tell you it was not necessarily nurture at all it wasn't like I got this from you know my my mom or or my dad or anyone that I was growing up with like that just wasn't really much of a thing my babysitters probably had that attitude a little bit maybe but it wasn't like yeah wasn't really a thing so I, I don't know but I love I just I don't know what it is I really don't like I said I don't think it was nurtured into me you know it's, it wasn't period just like driving in winter like this, oh, I just love it. The prairies in winter is kind of where it's at sometimes. Obviously until it gets dangerous. What I mean by that is like, you know, no power, being snowed in for things that haven't happened to me in my life, but you know, things that are potential with the elements. I don't, I don't like huge storms and getting freaked out and scared for my life, but anyway, oh, I just love it. I know I've mentioned this before, but it's been a long time since I've mentioned it in a vlog. And I don't remember if there was a train here when I mentioned it last time. But this like wall right here is the back wall of the property that I, I live on. And yeah, we're like, my bedroom window is less, I would, well, it's about maybe 20 meters away from these train tracks, which causes a lot of uh, vibration to the house sometimes and a lot of noise. But it's, I don't know, I've been able to sleep through it as far as I can remember, for as long as I can remember anyway. Pardon? Am I going to cross? No. No. Uh, anyway, that was weird. So, I don't remember what I was saying. I just live really close to these train tracks. Um, however, I rarely ever see... I rarely ever like see trains on here. It's always just like I hear them and feel them when I'm inside the house. Uh, but when I come home, there's really one here. So it's kind of cool. Unfortunately, there's not much uh, good art on it right now. <laughs> I mean, on the cars that I can see. But uh, one day I should just take a walk down there and see some sick stuff. I, I want to like put a literal bench out here one day and do some benching. That would be sick, but again, I don't really know the schedule. It seems that they run on this track mostly at night. You could see in the distance, there's like trains like across the highway. Um, they run way more consistently over there in the daytime, but I rarely see ones here. So anyway, that's one sick thing about living in this neighborhood. Uh, I, like I said, the noise isn't really a, a problem. Uh, it doesn't really affect my sleep as much as I, as I know anyway. Um, and i don't know the vibrations on in the house sometimes it's like holy crap it's like real bad but uh that's very rare anyway trains well there's more snow over here than i thought <clears throat> um i don't know how to bunny hop so that's not cool it's a pretty essential trail skill that i should probably learn well i don't know how it's whatever depending on the trails you ride it's essential it hasn't bothered me well, okay it's bothered me that i can't bunny hop for a long time ever since i was riding bmx i didn't really try that hard either um because it's not easy so i quit because i suck at being disciplined um but then riding trails i was like you know what like <laughs> if i knew how to bunny hop on my bmx it'd be a lot easier to uh lift my mountain bike and bunny hop that way 
But uh, I don't know. I, it's just been on my radar more. I was just really enjoying the trails the way that they were. Uh, just I mean, just riding them without having to bunny hop. There's very few obstacles that I could or would want to bunny hop over. But there's been a few on some trails, some like fallen trees that I, I could bunny hop. One, I would never be able to. It's too big. But um, there's been a couple things where I'm like, oh, that would be useful, you know? Anyway, and then uh, it's just been on my radar more because of like certain pages and stuff I follow that were like, here's how to bunny hop. And I was like, yeah, I should probably do that. One of them, Global Mountain Bike Network, um, uh, some folks in the UK. And so I learned in the past, like, I don't know, six months or so, maybe less than that, that there's like a different style of bunny hopping in Europe. And the Euro hop is, is I would say it makes more sense to me to not pull up on the handlebars and, and stuff. However, I think it's a lot harder to learn. Um, and from what I've researched, it is harder to learn, but once you have it dialed, it's just, it makes more sense and it's a better technique. And in order to do that, I need to learn how to manual first. And manualing does not sound that difficult, but for me to put all my weight in the back end and then trust that without like falling over, I don't know. There's just a thing about it that it, there's like a, I think it's a mental block more than anything. And then learning how to pull up and hop and do all that in succession and in sync in order to get off the ground is gonna be uh, a harder thing skill-wise. But right now it's just a mental game of just learning how to manual. Uh, I started doing it a couple months ago and then I quit and I was just like, yeah, I, cause every time it's nice enough, I just want to go ride. I don't want to stay in this parking lot and, and you know, try this stuff out. So that's, this is me sucking right now because I can't manual at all. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really have enough time to go for a full ride and it was kind of too windy anyway. So here we are behind the parking lot, seeing what happens. Just like this is as low as my seat goes on my mountain bike it's as low as it goes if I can get even lower I know that would be better but uh, I don't I just I'm trying to pump in and then lean back I'm not trying to pull my handlebars up leaning back is what's supposed to bring you know my bike up and I can't tell sometimes if I'm getting it even a little bit because I know that I'm pulling up sometimes and I'm not supposed to be, so I'm trying to just let my my lean bring it up, but I can't stay stay back, and I'm not getting back far enough to like, it just pops down right away. I don't need to practice this for like, I don't even know. I, I don't know if I could do more than 10 minutes at a time. I get so bored. Like doing things that are hard is easy when it's fun. So doing something like this, like practicing a hard skill is what I'm gonna call it, without the fun part is so annoying. Like riding my bike is fun, this isn't fun. This is like training on one very specific skill. That's like, I don't know, if I was practicing jumps or something, that's a fun, hard skill to learn. Um, I mean, it's scary too, but I mean like, once you get the hang of it a little bit, like practicing on bigger jumps and stuff like that, I'm sure it would be fun. And that's something I do need to learn. But doing this, like just practicing getting my tire up, just like little, ugh, it's just really annoying. I need to come out here and do it more often and try for like 20 minutes, half an hour, just try and try and try until I get a little bit of progress and then just build on it. But it sucks and it's hard and I suck. Uh, I suck at sucking. That's what it is. I suck at sucking. It's hard to like want to put the effort in to get better when it comes to things like this. Anyway, I'm just going to cap off the vlog right here. Um, not super exciting this week, but yeah, it's going to be like another week at least before I can ride trails. It's gonna be like sunny every day. It's been like plus seven and stuff since like the blizzard, but like there's so much snow left on the ground and it, then it needs to all melt and then the, it needs to dry and the trails and the mud and the, ugh. Anyway, um, I did another album review thing, uh, top 10 albums that changed my life, but it's uh, about compilation albums. So you can check that out. There's an art process video up. 
um, that is with uh, Laura Lee and I doing like round one of like a painting, which we did at the opening of our reception uh, for our exhibition that's going on right now at Le Petit Trianon in the basement of that building. Um, so that'll be something else you can look at. And there's a conversation about admitting wrong. Also the video snakes have legs. So there's three other videos for this week that you can check out if you're interested in any of that stuff. No raw ride for this week. Um, or maybe I, I don't remember when I, yeah, yeah, uh, did I? I don't remember if it was this week or last week, but I went to Sparwood uh, round two and I had an interesting time there. So there is a video for a raw ride either this week or last week. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's that.